2,000 people die from suicide each year. That means that one person dies from suicide every 40 seconds. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people from 15 to 29 years old. And 90% of people who have committed suicide had a mental illness. This has a lot to say about society and about what we haven't done to help people and to keep them from committing suicide. My name is Victoria Hernandez and welcome to my channel, I Live to Inspire Mental Health. I'm making this video because it is such an important topic and it is Suicide Prevention Month, September, and I believe that there is a huge stigma surrounding the topic of suicide and even talking about it. Um, when in reality, the way to resolve this issue is by talking about it and having open discussions on how to make the people who want to commit suicide feel connected to this world and save them uh, from ending their life. 90% of the people who have committed suicide have a mental illness. And when you hear that fact, many times you would think of people who, you know, only the people who are in mental hospitals or like people who have been diagnosed um, by a psychiatrist or a professional with a mental illness, but that's not necessarily the case. And just because you have a suicidal thought doesn't mean you will commit suicide. The reason that I was taken to a psychiatrist was because I was having extreme suicide thoughts. Um, I wasn't diagnosed with anything. I was just very depressed um, and I had a lot of thoughts of suicide at that moment where I did have them. I did not think that I would actually ever do anything. Um, but it is something that um, you believe you have control over your, act your actions but you really don't and that's a huge misconception that not only the individual having the suicidal thoughts has, but also the the public, like the, you know, in general, society believes that, you know, the person who commits suicide is in full control of their actions when that's not the reality. I always say that there is a very thin line between thinking about suicide and actually committing suicide, and that is very different from everybody. Uh, but from the moment that you have a suicidal thought, you should seek help, talk to somebody because that is the thought of, you know, there's something wrong. Um, you might like be going through a really hard time in life or uh, you might have anxiety that's causing you to have those compulsive thoughts. But the thing is that if you don't treat them, if you don't talk about them, then they're, they're gonna gain much more power over you and it can be dangerous at the end of the day. Um, for me, it was just like there was moments where I really wanted to like hurt myself or do something to myself, but I would stop and I wouldn't actually like, you know, engage in such actions. I would like, there was points where, I don't know, it was just really hard. Um, and I would just like say stop and like, I felt like I was in control, but the reality was that my brain was starting to gain control over me. And if I wasn't stopped soon enough, I was gonna lose control of my thoughts and of my connection to this world and you never know what could happen. So thankfully my parents took me to a psychiatrist and I was treated and I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder um, which helped me get to where I am today. So back to the 90% of people being mentally ill, yes I was mentally ill but I didn't know it. So it's not always the people that are obvious, it can be anybody. One in five people in the U.S. have a mental disorder. So it's like, you know, we all know more than five people. Uh, sometimes they don't talk about it. Sometimes these thoughts, these compulsive thoughts are kept in our heads because there's just this huge fear that people are gonna judge us, they're gonna think that we're crazy, like we're the only person in the world who's having these thoughts. Or we only hear about extreme cases of people who actually committed suicide, but not of the people who thought about it and got help and now are okay. I'm okay now, I'm happy now. Um, and now I know that if I ever had those kind of thoughts, it's a red flag, I need to go get help. 
especially if I have a bipolar episode, which it doesn't happen often, but when I do, I, ha I get one of those thoughts of guilt of what would the world be like if I wasn't here. And in that moment, I'm like, hold on, this is not me, this is my brain. Something is going on and I need to do something about it. I need to go get help, I need to talk to somebody and let them know that this is going on so they can help me. There is a huge stigma surrounding um, suicide and that is about people being in control, uh, people doing it out of selfishness, it being a sin. Um, and the thing is that people need to understand that suicide and suicidal thoughts are not in control of the person. Those are things that are just like in the head, you know, like chemical imbalances. It could be, it could be a very stressful situation that causes you to have a lot of anxiety, depression, being fired from a job. There are just things that like your, your brain reacts to that way and you can't control it. And I'm telling you that too, even think about suicide. You must be going through so much pain to even like consider it um, because contemplating it is something that is, you know, it derives from feeling such a pain that you don't want to live in this world anymore. And it's not your fault. If you're having suicidal thoughts, that is not your fault. And if you know somebody who is, never make them feel like it is. Um, because the pain, I guarantee you, the pain that they're feeling is beyond their even like thinking that it's a sin or that it's like selfish. It's literally, they feel so terrible that they or I you know, didn't want to be here anymore at some point. Um, and so one time I did hear that, I heard that like, you know, the worst sin a human can make is commit suicide. And when that person said that, I saw a girl walk out and start crying. And in my head, I was like, that is so wrong. Like, how could you say that when, when it's a thought that you cannot control? When it, like somebody that's going through that is literally like, they feel dead inside. It's a pain that is so, so big that it feels physical. Um, so if society understood that, they would have a different point of view on how to treat somebody who has a mental illness. And not a mental illness, but not just a mental illness, but suicidal thoughts specifically. And it's just that there is a lack of control. And the suicidal person might think they have control, but they don't. And that's why there's that very thin line I mentioned of committing suicide and just thinking about it. And you should always get help as soon as you start having those thoughts. Um, also, it is something that is common. You're not the only person, you're not crazy. If you say you have suicidal thoughts, that doesn't mean that you're gonna go to a mental hospital necessarily. Um, if like that, there's a lot of like psychological things, you know, there's like, you go to the psychiatrist, like I went to a psychiatrist, I got medicated, I went to a psychologist that helped me. Um, I was never at a risk big enough for, to myself that it couldn't be controlled by my doctors so i never went i was never uh, put in a mental hospital there are people that do need it to save their lives and that does not make them crazy what like at all that makes them strong because they're putting their mental health first because they're fighting to survive even when they don't want to um and they feel like the whole world is on top of them but thinking about it you know it just it doesn't make you crazy it makes you human makes you human humans we have thoughts and feelings that sometimes we're too scared to share um, but you know it's important to know that it's okay it's okay and if you've had these thoughts it's not the end of the world because you can get better you can survive and everybody not everybody who has a suicidal thought is gonna commit suicide and I hope that by watching this, you can realize that life does get better, that life is worth fighting for, that you can realize that those thoughts, you cannot control them necessarily, but there are actions that you can do to make them you know, go away, and that is getting help. So it is possible to get rid of them, and it's possible to like, you know, stop feeling this weight of the world without, having, without committing suicide. It is possible to solve this issue without a permanent solution. 
you know, without something, like without permanently, you know, without ending your life. It is possible to solve this. It is possible to overcome. Um, and we need to talk about it. As the world needs to start talking about this without fear. Because there shouldn't be fear. Because fear leads to loneliness. To people feeling that they can't talk to anybody and get help. Uh, to feel like they're the only person that's ever gone through this. That since... They don't know anybody else that's gone through this and they've only heard stuff from, you know, movies and like the news of people who've actually committed suicide. They believe that that is the only ending that they can have and that is not true. That is not true. I searched up some ways of knowing if somebody could be at risk of committing suicide and how to help them. And that came from the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. And... I also have gotten the statistics that I mentioned earlier in the video from World Health Organization. So I'm gonna start by saying some of the things I searched up about how to know some of the warning signs. So one, um, if the person is wanting to talk about dying and killing themselves, that is a huge warning sign because um, that is them basically telling you what they're thinking and that should always be taken seriously, not as a joke. Um, because, you know, it is something that that person is saying for a reason, uh, not just because they want to scare you. The second one is that person might be looking for ways to kill themselves or searching it online or buying guns. So if you're looking at this person and they're having those weird behaviors, um, like buying certain things that they could use to harm themselves and you know they're like you see that they searched up ways like how, how to kill themselves that is obviously a huge warning sign and um you should not be afraid to kind of like find help for them approach them uh, not, not attacking them but approaching them in a way that you know you can help him or her get help um, another way of knowing might be them talking about feeling hopeless or having no reason, no reason to live. I know I felt like that whenever I was going through depression. I thought there was no purpose on life, on the future. I said like, okay, like, you know, you go to college, you graduate, and then what? So what? Like, I saw no joy. I saw like the world would be a better place without me. Um... There was also a feeling of being trapped or unbearable pain. And this is when I talked about not being able to control like your suicidal thoughts or like actually committing suicide is not the fault of the person. Um, and that is because you're feeling so much pain that you feel like the only way to get out of that pain is by ending your life, but it's not. Um, talking about being a burden to others, you also feel this heavy weight on your heart and you feel like the world would do better without you, and it isn't. Um, I also felt like that a lot, specifically, you know, like making the people around me hurt because they saw the, the way that I was being and I thought that they were going to be better without me, but that's just not the reality, that's just what our brain tricks us to do. I've seen this thing say that... Uh, depression is deceiving or is a liar because it tells us things that aren't real it changes our perception of the world um, it could also be increasing the use of alcohol or drugs because that can sometimes be used to escape to not feel pain so if you see that a person is acting differently uh, they've been consuming more alcohol or consuming drugs then you know that something might be wrong and you should check up on them um, acting anxious, agitated, or behaving recklessly. Also another way, um, whenever you're feeling these thoughts, you're kind of like, you know, your, your head is not in the right place. And you have a lot of anxiety. You start acting in, in ways to uh, try to distract yourself from the pain. Um, but, you know, sometimes the brain is so powerful that it wins. And, like, we don't want... We don't want our brains to win. Um, maybe sleeping too little or too much. So a lot of the symptoms are symptoms of depression as well, um, which is, which makes sense because a lot of like the, the people who commit suicide were, I mean, 
depressed. I mean, that's the the burden on people's lives. Like all those feelings of self, like no self worth, come from depression. Withdrawing or isolating themselves, they kind of start. You know, like you want to stop being around people, and you also have to see that as a warning sign. Like why has that person been acting differently, and you know, also do something about it. Um, show, showing rage or talking about seeking revenge that can also be very dangerous um, and should always be taken very seriously because you know a person who's not mentally stable can act out even like the worst scenarios they I mean because their brain is just not at the right place and extreme mood swings so those are some of the warning signs that you should seek out whenever um, you know, you see somebody that's acting differently. They, they might have signs of depression. You, you have to understand that they're not seeking attention. Um, they're just trying to manage this thought that they have in their heads and they don't know how to deal with it, what to do about it. And from that perspective, as a person who's there witnessing this, it's important to be understanding and not judgmental. Um, so you can help save that person. Lastly, I will state some ways that you can help, how you can help a person who feels suicidal. So basically the first thing that it says is be direct, talk openly and matter of factly about suicide. So kind of like don't, you know, walk around the topic because you feel uncomfortable. It's important to talk, to be direct, to like be honest and um, understand that the person needs to hear that somebody's understanding what they're going through and not just kind of like tiptoeing around them so you have to just like be completely open with the person who's going through this and also be willing to listen um allow exp expressions of feelings and accept the feelings so kind of not you know being mad at the person for having those thoughts because like i said before they can't really control it um and just be willing to listen and understand sometimes all you can do is listen um and that person's gonna kind of like pour their souls to you if they feel like they can trust you if they feel like you won't judge them and that's one of the best ways that you can get the information that you need so you can go and help them um here it says don't debate whether suicide is right or wrong or whether feelings are good or bad so don't lecture about values in life which is kind of like the example that i gave about uh, you know somebody saying that it was a sin to commit suicide and it's like that doesn't help the person having those suicidal thoughts because the reality is that they can't control it and the last thing they want to hear is that what they're feeling is wrong and in a way not valid because they shouldn't be having them because and that's just not true not right um, show interest and support be available um, don't dare that person to do it don't act shocked because if you act shocked, then the person is gonna like be like, okay, I can't tell them this because if I keep telling them what I'm feeling, then they're gonna be freaked out. They're gonna like leave me. They're not gonna wanna be there for me or like, or the worst is gonna happen to me because you know, I don't know what they're gonna hand use with that information I'm giving them. So that wouldn't be very good. Um, it also draws a, a huge distance between you and that person. Don't be sworn to secrecy. This is very important because you don't want that person to tell you, like, don't tell anybody, promise me you won't because you can't do that. You need to go and tell the right person so that person can get help because there is so much that we can do as, you know, as a friend, for example, there is so much that we can do as a non-professional. Um, so it's important to not commit yourself to, you know, not saying anything. Take action, remove any hazardous materials, um, weapons or pills that that person could grab to like harm themselves um also one of the ones that i read was that if you don't feel like you can commit yourself to helping that person that is okay and what you do is that you direct them to another person or the right person that where they can express their feelings where they can you know be supportive because you don't want to be there and then not be there because that hurt, hurts a person more and, and it's hurting your own mental health so if you can't commit yourself to being there for them, make sure to find somebody who can. Make sure to take them to a professional or that they're getting the right help. If that's the best that you can do, making sure that they get help, then that's good enough. 
um, because I, I don't think that everybody is meant to know how to deal with this uh, because we're humans and um, but it is important to make sure that that person does get help and is not alone um, and here the last one is get help from people or agencies specializing in crisis intervention and suicide prevention so actually it's the suicide prevention lifeline has a phone number and it is 1-800-273-8255 and if you are feeling suicidal or uh, just don't know what to do or need help in this crisis call that number and they will answer and they also have it in spanish and for deaf people or uh, hard of hearing so they have a lot of options available i will leave the links to my resources down below and specifically um suicide prevention lifeline has a lot of resources that you can go to for help with this i conclude my video and i hope you guys liked it and please 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 go get help if you need to go get help uh, if you're having suicidal uh, thoughts talk to somebody uh, if you know somebody who's having suicidal thoughts then listen try to get them to get help uh, be there for them um, and overall let's all work towards having a world more open to talking about the hard topics because that's the only way that we're gonna get it to be a better place and we're gonna be able to save the lives of many people um, if you are having these kind of thoughts, you're not alone um, and it does not mean that you are going to commit suicide. Um, it means that you're going through something hard but you have the possibility of ch changing your life around because there are the resources and it is possible. And it is possible for you to be full of life and wanting to do all these things and chase your dreams like I do now. Um, in the future so please don't give up so if you like this video please like comment and subscribe and tell me what you want me to talk about in the future what kind of questions you have for me um, and yeah please share this with somebody who you believe should listen to this message and always remember that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and a bad day does not mean a bad life